Four liter engine is a, is a very strong unit. Great engine. Delara did an amazing job of developing this engine. As I shall now demonstrate. Woo! Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. This time round, we're having a workshop catch-up. It's been very, very busy in the workshop with all sorts of different things going on and cars coming and going and uh, jobs being finished or moving on significantly. This is one of them. Uh, for people who've been following it, this is the fifth ever production Lamborghini. It's the fifth car that actually came off the production lines. To sort of give you some idea of how personal it all was at this stage with Ferruccio Lamborghini, the car after this was made for his brother, Edmondo. So it was all a very, very personal, in the family type, very Italian, dare I say it, scenario that he started this car factory and made um, cars for his friends. Uh, so I'm now gonna take the cover off this and we'll have a look, it's back from the paint shop. And there it is. This is the exact original color. This is a azzurro metallizzato in Italian speak, or metallic blue to uh, the rest of us. We've managed to pick up traces of this color from inside the doors, from the original paintwork when it was new in 1964. And this paint has been very, very carefully blended and matched for metallic grain consistency, size, reflectiveness, hue, etc. So here we have it. This is exactly as this car started life, albeit I would venture to say the underneath, the sort of underpinnings are better protected and better prepared than they were then. But it's looking magnificent. It really is. It's very, very happy with the job. And you can have a look around it in more detail. But we're going to start building this up. We've refurbished all the suspension, all the running gear, all the electrics, the original, not original, but originally replicated pigskin leather interior, which isn't pigskin at all, actually. It's a particular type of artificially mottled leather that was used at the time. We can go into that in a bit more detail in a minute, but um, there we are. So this is going to be taking shape and becoming a proper working car over the next few months. Well, here we are, Shay Craig. Hi. Your little domain in our workshop. <laughs> Um, and this is one of the seats out of the 350 GT, which actually looks beautiful. In fact, it's so beautiful we've decided not to retrim it because it's fine as it is. Um, it's quite interesting leather, this. Um, according to the build sheet, it would have been pigskin originally, except pigskin isn't pigskin, actually, because pigskin's used in shoes and things. And it's not suitable for automotive leather because it's not hard wearing enough. And you found this, haven't you? What, what was this off, actually? That's out of the Mura SV that so, we're retrimming. Right, so this is, this is a Mura SV we've got in for restoration, the one that we also saw in one of the earlier videos. And this is the interior out of it, which is a non-original colour and a non-original specification. And this has got lots of little perforations all over it. And what was done in period by Connolly and people like that is they ran it through a machine which was like a huge round wire brush and just put these holes all over it um, and, and called it pigskin. But it's actually not. It's, it's smooth leather like this. That looks like Connolly leather to me actually. Would you agree? It's, nice, yeah. it's lovely leather that. Yeah. Really is. But that's, that's probably 1980s I would think. Yeah, it looks... It's a really good mix. Well, it is, it? it is. But um, when people were ordering pigskin for their very expensive Lamborghini Miura interiors, I think, for example, there were only two or three Miura S's that were specified with pigskin, one of them being Frank Sinatra's car. Um, people thought they were getting pigskin, and they weren't. It was just leather that had been run through this machine and called pigskin. So there you go. <laughs> well worth four or five thousand pounds of anybody's money. <laughs> Um, yeah, but this would have started life with that, but we, we just can't bring ourselves to retrim that because it's so lovely. Yeah, I mean, the whole interior is like that. Yeah, it just seems a shame, really, I think, to throw it away. Yeah. It's, it's a good seat. Yeah. <laughs> it looks nice. It does. Our customer agrees, yes. and that's going to go beautifully with the light blue metallic, yes. actually, which is the original colour scheme from new. 
Um, so, uh, right, and we've also, you've been doing this Countach, haven't yes. you? Um, this is a Countach anniversary that's come in, isn't it? The very last of the Countaches. They made quite a lot of these, 652, I think, from memory, with the Horatio Pagani special body kit on it and a different interior, sort of more user-friendly, more conventional seats, more adjustable. And you've been doing a whole um, job on this interior, haven't you, Craig? This isn't a retrim no. um, in conjunction with the wonderful Steve, yes. who does the leather refurbishing work, whose work is absolutely beautiful, but you've sort of done various other yeah, bits on it. There was a few bits of repairs that we needed to do. We needed to retrim the doors here because they've worn through on the, on the edge. So we've retrimmed them. The piping was worn on the driver's side, so I had to do new piping, take the cover off, replace the pipe, and then retrim it. Um, we've done the glove box as well, which looks nice. Um, what else? Oh, there, was, um, there was a few loose thread on the uh, on the driver's seats and the door cards, so um, yeah. we went in and re re sewn some of the uh, some of the thread that had worn. But this is this is all the original leather, isn't it? Really, yes, or yeah, pretty well, great. pretty well. Yes, yeah. And it's it's been reconnalized very gently. You've put some, as you say, some new piping in, original carpets which you put some clips on to stop them moving round, and the whole thing just it's been lifted to a whole different level. It, you didn't, it didn't look that great, but no. now you realise how bad it actually was. Yeah, it, it looked okay in, in situ, but as soon as we took all the pieces out, it, it looked more worn and yeah, a bit, you know, a bit more sad <laughs> than yes. it did when it, when it was in the vehicle. Yeah. And it, yeah. it looks great. We've just had a, um, this customer is not local, so we've just had um, a video call, haven't we, yesterday yes. with him, yeah, and he's least, yeah. absolutely delighted. Yeah. So, uh, great. He's over the moon, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thanks, Craig. Well, a car that's created a lot of attention is this car, the copper-coloured Countach. This colour is actually called in Lamborghini speak, Rame Colorado. A lot of Lamborghini's colours were named after places, Rosso Sevilla, Seville Red, Rosso Granada, Granada Red, and this is um, Colorado, named after copper from Colorado. It's a stunning colour scheme with this sort of uh, light beige, light tan or dark beige interior. Marcus is um, struggling a little bit here with... Uh, it's just thrown us a few curveballs, hasn't it, this car? Yeah, yeah. We've just had a few things to do to it. It's been uh, restored, but um, there are a few, a few gaps, should we say. And Marcus has got a bit of a, a love-hate relationship with this car at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, um, just a bit. We won't ask the percentages. <laughs> um, and are you getting the fuel gauge out of it at yeah, the moment? Yeah, just checking the fuel gauge. It's not working at the moment. Uh, repaired the speedo. So yeah, it's a few little technical hitches. Right. Okay. Good. All right. Well, um, keep at it, and uh, we'll leave before anything unrepeatable <laughs> or unbroadcastable <laughs> happens. <laughs> You're showing great patience there. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, the next one that we've uh, got to show you is this, the Rambo Lambo, the LM002. This was uh, very interesting how this came about, really. In the late 70s, early 80s, Lamborghini decided they were going to make a mi military vehicle, like a sort of Jeep on steroids, um, and they called it the Cheetah. And it was originally to get government military contracts with to try and bolster the company because uh, the finances were in a bit of a state in the late 70s and early 80s. It backfired on them, unfortunately. Nobody took it up and it didn't work. But what they did do, they thought, hang on, we've got various ingredients here. We've got some 4x4 know-how that we've learned about. Um, we've got a Countach Quattrovolvo engine at this time, 5.2 litre Countach engine, and we've got some fantastic stylists and engineers at our disposal. So they came up with this, LM002. It was the darling of shakes uh, and things like that in the 1980s. They all were falling over themselves to get into one of these and stand more chance of getting home over the sand dunes than they did in the likes of an Aston Martin Lagonda. Uh, so these were less abandoned in the desert and more likely to get one, them from A to B. Uh, great bit of kit. 
Um, Lamborghini obviously had a lot of weight here. I mean, this car in period was capable of 125 miles an hour, which doesn't sound a lot now. We live in the age of the sort of almost 200 mile an hour, if not 200 mile an hour, four by four, but very different time in the late 80s. And Lamborghini had to improvise. They were in uncharted territory. I would venture to say this was the fastest four by four available, certainly production at that time. Um, with this crazy uh, huge V12 engine in it. So we're going to be doing a video that's dedicated to this when it's finished. But how did Lamborghini get round various things? Well, they couldn't make the brakes that big because the wheel and tyre technology wasn't that big at the time. So they, for instance, put two brake calipers on the front here, one beside the other, with this quite large brake disc, ventilated disc, and I can tell you an amusing anecdote about brakes and uh, two calipers. When Rolls-Royce first announced the Silver Shadow in 1965, when it first went into production, 65, 66, it used girling brake calipers. Uh, one on the front, like this, and one on the back. Uh, these are side by side, but one either end. And they were made by girling in Liverpool for Rolls-Royce and Bentley at Crewe. And they were also off the Ford Granada car at that time. And Ford had incredibly strict quality control, very strict. And what um, Ford used to do was get, they'd test one in every so often brake calipers and sort of make sure that the, the, the bore of the piston uh, bores were exactly right size, etc. And some of them they rejected. They said, no, these are slightly outside spec will reject the batch. What happened to the batch? They went to Rolls-Royce and Bentley at Crewe and they never had any back from them. They never had any back. So um, this is one, uh, I think enough time has passed now to be able to say that actually Rolls-Royce were fitting Ford's reject Granada brake calipers in the 1960s. Not, not great, but um, very true. Um, I know that from an ex extremely reliable source. Anyway, this car's been quite a major restoration. Uh, we've had it painted. It's just about to have its final flat and polish. We've redone all the suspension, including these enormous springs and shock absorbers. Marcus has rebuilt the whole thing with new joints. We've had everything replated, etc. It really has been quite a job of work, but it's, the end is within sight now. So um, yeah, okay, we'll move on to the next one. Well, here we are. This is the Lamborghini Silhouette engine that um, we saw in the last workshop catch-up. This is the second prototype Silhouette. They made 52 of them, and this was the second one. And we've been doing the heads. We took the heads off because the, uh, the exhaust valves are sodium filled on them, and they have a habit, they, the heads can break off them like for on. We've got some new stainless steel exhaust valves. You've been fitting them, haven't you, Les? New valves, new, I think seat, we cut the seats as well. Cut the seats. re all the valve clearances. Good, okay, which is not a five minute job on this engine. As we found out, yeah. <laughs> and this is Alex, who is one of our newest recruits. People have said um, about passing on to the next generation. So we've got Jack here, and we've got Alex who've started with us now. And um, we'll be obviously asking you questions in a couple of days, how to rebuild a, a Lamborghini engine, no pressure. Um, and you're holding the flywheel so Les can clean up this thread, are you? you can... Yeah, somebody had uh, peened the end over to stop the nut coming off instead of putting a proper lock washer on. Oh, charming. Yeah. So we're in the process of cleaning that now. Good, okay. So this is the cradle mm -hmm. that the engine sits on. This is the gearbox here. So when the engine's in the car, you will actually have the back of the seats here and the bulkhead and then the exhaust system pokes out the back that way so uh, it's all clever stuff beautifully compact um, all sorts of things that run along the length of the car and um, coolant hoses and oil pipes oil cooler pipes it's a lovely little piece of engineering this actually it's quite a sweet little engine um, so this will be back together Okay, great. Thanks very much, guys. Well, this is the Ferrari Fiberglass 308 uh, that we've been doing for quite a while now, actually. Uh, I say fiberglass. 
the, uh, there's a big thing now about the Vetro Resina Ferrari 308. They only made them for, um, I think it was 18 months maximum when they first came out. And everybody wants a fiberglass 308, which is fine because the, the body is fiberglass. But um, it doesn't stop them rusting underneath the skin. It's all still going on while you're driving along cheerfully in your shiny car, potentially. Um, and James has been doing his magic on this. Um, we're down to the A pillars now, but um, you've got all this chassis has been welded in. This was absolutely yeah, rotten, that's wasn't it? Replaced. So that's all new from the, the back there, right to the front. The struts of the seat sits on, they've been replaced. So all that's done, both sides. Um, we're dealing with these here now. Uh, yeah, that's right there. Okay, so these are the structural elements of the car. This and this effectively hold the car together. Basically, yeah. And this was rotted through, if uh, we remember from one of the previous workshop videos, and this has all been beautifully recreated and replaced and welded back in. It's really lovely work, this, isn't it? Very nice. Um, uh, some of it was done elsewhere, That's and right. you've done the vast majority of it. Because yes, yes, yes. uh, it takes quite high amperage welding to weld these thick fassi uh, chassis tubes. That's Easy right. for me to say. That's right. <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks very much, James. Thank you. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic. Or does it? I admit we had Ferruccio's Countach in a few months ago, Mr. Lamborghini's Lamborghini Countach. And here's the link to that here, that video. But I know that's a hard act to follow, but nevertheless, it is the 50th anniversary of the Countach. We ought to take this bad boy out for a bit of a run, hey? Well, as I said earlier, this is 2021, the 50th anniversary of the shockwave that was the Lamborghini Countach, to give it its correct pronunciation, um, that was launched in 1971 at the Geneva show. And uh, it was like a spaceship from another planet, and it actually still is. Uh, particularly in this car's Rami Colorado, Colorado Copper in English. And um, this is one of the low body Countaches, as they're called. Um, at the end of the LP400 S2 production, which is what this is, a 1980 LP400 S2. Um, when they went on to the LP400 S3, they changed the body. They increased the height of the body by 80 millimeters because it's very, very tight in here. Um, and um, I would have no idea how Bob Wallace uh, drove these being six foot two, the low body Countach. But um, I actually drove an LP400, one of the original and very valuable Periscopio cars around the Goodwood motor racing circuit some years ago with a, in one of these, the, the earlier version, but the low body, with a crash helmet on as well. And I was like this. It wasn't great. I felt as though I was riding a bike all the time because my head was canted at 30 degrees. But um, it all adds to the uh, excitement and the experience. Um, this car is, uh, we've been doing a lot of work on this car. It, this is the original factory color and we've done the brakes, the suspension, we've had the whole thing apart and I'm just, uh, this is just its first time on the road after all that and the wheel geometry has been checked and I must say it feels great. I'm not pushing it, just warming it through but uh, the brakes were pulling over very badly and they're now pulling up straight even with everything not bedded in, fresh pads, uh, all fresh hydraulics and the ride doesn't get any smoother on these cars on these bumpy roads but still a great place to be and the the funny thing about this paint scheme is uh, for years people frowned upon uh, metallic coppers and bronzes and even reds because they were uh, <coughs> considered in for a dig in some way or nobody wanted them and now they're everywhere. Uh, the French car manufacturers came out, both Renault and Peugeot came out with red metallics um, and there's loads of people doing uh, copper and orange and red and gold metallics again now and I love it. Um, but the funny thing was Rolls-Royce had a, 
a color in the 1960s called regal red, a beautiful um, sort of bright red metallic, very much like is in vogue now. And for years, that color couldn't be replicated. Why? Because one of the ingredients in Rolls-Royce regal red was whale oil. Uh, whale oil, I, ICI actually used whale oil in the formulation of, um, of Regal Red. <coughs> and that's why it's only in the 21st century with pearlescence and modern paint technology that that sort of colour can be replicated. It's quite interesting because whale oil was used in, um, in quite a few car applications. Um, if we think uh, back to the 1930s MGs, the likes of the TC, uh, TD, they had whale oil in their shock absorbers. They had lever arm dampers, and the correct fluid in them was whale oil. So, um, how things have moved on. Anyway, I've warmed this car through now. It's looking very good. We got uh, good T's and P's, good temperatures and pressures. So it's time to see if this Countach is a Countach. Suspension is great. Brakes are pulling up well. Not going to use them very hard because they're new. Oh yes. It's so satisfying doing this. Um, I mean, it's strange because we've, uh, I've been doing a lot of driving as Countaches recently. We've got five of them in the workshop at the moment. And um, I never quite know what my working day is going to bring. But um, this is just great. It really is. What a stunning colour. I love the colour on this car, but that is just a personal thing. But if you're going to have a Countach, you don't want it in a subtle colour, really. Um, this is the 4-litre engine in this. Um, Lamborghini couldn't use the 5-litre the that the car was brought out with in 1971. Well, it wasn't brought out because it didn't enter production until three years later. But the 5-litre engine just wasn't reliable enough. So they had to resort back to the 4-litre. Um, they did eventually get the 5-litre right uh, in 1981, but um, the, even the, on the earlier 5-litre engines, the blocks were porous and they had problems with oil feed getting out of galleries and into other places. But um, the 4-litre engine is a, is a very strong unit, great engine. Delara did an amazing job of developing this engine, as I shall now demonstrate. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Very happy. This is definitely going to put a few smiles per mile on the owner's face when he gets it back. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. We'll have regular updates on things that are going on and jobs as they come along. But uh, thanks for watching, as always. Please like, please share, please subscribe, and we'll be back with something else very soon.